going to the States. We've probably traveled with our cat about 10 times across Canada now, but this is gonna be the first time we're going to the States with him. So things are a little bit different, but overall the process is honestly so easy, especially if you're taking all the proper precautions. I think the first and most important thing is making sure your cat's comfortable. So we usually go to our vet and get gabapentin, like some kind of relaxing sedative, like medication to make sure he's a little more calmer for the trip. And we usually do that eight to 12 hours before we leave. And then he pops another pill right before we leave. And you know, by this point he's gotten like pretty okay at taking medication. We tried sprinkling it in his food at first, but then he just wouldn't eat his food. So we've had to resort to just shoving it down his throat, but it's not too hard. You just have to like pry open his mouth, shove it in and then close their mouth so fast. Otherwise they will spit that shit out. Like they don't want to swallow that pill. And then once our baby is sedated, we shove him in his cute little backpack. And this one is super convenient because it can go on its side and it's super comfortable. He still has like mesh on either side to breathe while he's on the plane. But then when it's on your back, he's still comfortable too. And there's lots of space. Like I'm obsessed with this one and it is TSA approved. All right, let's go. One of the downsides about traveling with your pet is that you have to check in at the customer service desk before going through security. You don't have a choice. Sometimes it can be busy, there can be lines, so we usually go an extra 30 minutes early just to account for that. At security is where things can get a little funky. You're gonna have to hold your animal and walk through the metal detectors, because their bag is gonna have to go through with all of your stuff, like normal bags do, and then your animal can't walk itself, so you gotta take it through the metal detectors. Not only that, but you have to hold him or her in one hand while they check the other for drugs. And then you gotta put them in your other hand while they check the other hand for drugs or whatever the hell they screen you for. So if you have a squirmy animal or they're super anxious, this is probably the worst that it's gonna get. Like this is the scariest part where I sometimes think like, oh my God, what if I'm not careful and Luna falls down and runs away forever. But once all of that's done, honestly, the hardest part's out of the way. Every airport now has a pet relief area, which is super helpful, especially if you're going for a long trip where you have multiple stopovers, because you can just go to this room in the airport and it's usually a secluded area where there's a little peeing area. There's like poop bags for you to clean up after your animal, a hand washing station. Like it's just a little room so your animal can do their business and have some privacy. And surprisingly, my cat has actually peed in the pet relief station. I didn't think he was gonna be able to do it, but he did. Oh my God, how did I forget? The most important thing when you're traveling with a pet, you have to call ahead and book your pet a spot on the plane. Like they go on as though they're your carry-on, but you still have to pay 50 bucks for them and they're essentially gonna take the spot of your carry-on. So you can no longer bring a carry-on, that pet is your carry-on. One of the bonuses about traveling with a pet is you do get to board the plane early. Whenever they call people who need extra assistance boarding or like people with families, that's usually when they say people who have pets. Sometimes they don't say it, so you can go up and ask, but you get to board early just because you do need extra time and usually it helps keep your animal calm if you're not standing there waiting with a lot of people around you as you're boarding. So it is better to try and get on early so that you can just get your animal comfortable on the plane. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. They go underneath the seat in front of you, they sit there, they chill for the rest of the plane ride, and then you're home free. You have made it to your destination and your animal is safe. Traveling with your animal for the first time can be super nerve wracking, but hopefully this helps ease those nerves because it's not as bad as it seems. And especially if you're taking certain precautions to make sure that they're feeling okay throughout this experience, it shouldn't be too bad. And what's crazy is people don't only just travel with cats and dogs. I've heard of people traveling with miniature horses. What? Honestly, I would love to see a raccoon. That would just make my day. But that is the video. If you have any questions at all, drop them below and I'll see you guys at the next one. Love you.